All right, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching this video. It's been a while since I posted anything. Um, there's a couple of things that I wanted to change on my channel just because uh, I wanted to make things a little bit easier. Um, so it took me a while to actually upload this video for my brake booster, master cylinder upgrade, and my hub upgrade. Uh, I'm actually changing the name of the channel to Ride or Fish. Um, I think this is more appropriate for my channel since I do a lot of car work and I go fishing too. But um, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started about this video. So today, what we're going to be doing is doing some upgrades to my truck. Finally, um, we're going to do a brake boost upgrade and a one inch master cylinder for my brakes to accommodate the the thirteen WLs that I have on there. Um, this should accomplish two things. It's supposed to provide me more brake boost, and it's also supposed to handle the larger wheels and tires better since um, the one inch booster should be able to move the brake fluid better um, and then of course the main reason why I'm actually doing all this is actually because I needed to do some lockers and a wheel bearing upgrade um, not really an upgrade really uh, a replacement is the better term um, unfortunately um, I went to do a wheel change at a, a a big box brand place and somehow they managed to mess up my front wheel bearing um, it took them over two and a half hours just to replace the tires on my truck which is ex extremely long uh, I'm not gonna say who it is because that's not really important um, either way the wheel bearing messed up they wouldn't change it. They they said it was because I'm running 305 70-16s on my whip, my Tacoma, which are oversized for this truck. But whatever. Long story short, I went ahead and decided that if I'm going to upgrade the wheel bearings, might as well throw some lockers on there. Um, it should help things out. But um, but let's go and get started. First part of this video is going to be the wheel bearings. I mean, uh, the first part of this video is going to be the master cylinder upgrade and a brake boost upgrade and parts will be in the description so apparently since my camera wasn't recording this whole time I need to show you guys some of the difference so this is the original master cylinder for the Tacoma this is a 13 uh, so if you have mushy brakes after going through the Tundra upgrade like me uh, it's usually because a combination of master boost cylinder and this um, it still stops properly even though it feels mushy some people may think it's not stopping as good just because it feels mushy but um, it actually is uh, I can definitely confirm that with all the towing that I do because the major advantage of the bigger brakes is brake fade. It's basically when your when your rotors and pads start to overheat and they don't have as good a stopping power. Um, brake fade is usually a bad thing when you're towing. Uh, usually just normal city driving, you don't really realize it, but sometimes you will, especially if you upgrade bigger wheels and tires like me. Uh, so having the bigger Tundra brakes definitely help the stopping distance but the more but it more so helps with the fact that it has bigger wheels bigger tires uh, heavier tires I should say um, and it also helps during towing because it keeps the brake fade um, to a minimum especially when you know you need to stop with you know 5,000 pounds on the back of a Tacoma which is a lot for a Tacoma um, well, this is the um, master cylinder from a 99 Forerunner. You know, you see there are differences between the two. So you can't just simply buy this one and put it on the, the Tacoma the boost cylinder. It is, it's a single diaphragm. You see it's kind of just one right here. Um, Alright, as you can see, I took out the uh, 
master boost cylinder so you guys can see it. You know, unfortunately, uh, you guys won't be able to see how it looked before, which is unfortunate because it helps. Um, you know, you guys didn't get to see any of the stuff that I had to go through to make this the right size. But this is the end result. So there's a big difference. As you see, single diaphragm, dual diaphragm, dual diaphragm provides more assisted braking. Uh, you know, another difference is you can't tell because of this spacer on here, but uh, these are over half an inch longer than the one on the 99 Forerunner. Again, all the part numbers will be in my description, so just look at the description and get part numbers of everything I'm used today. Um, so, this, these links, this on the, four, on the Tacoma, this is shorter, mainly this part here, as you can see on the Forerunner. Uh, just the shaft right here comes out more. Um, Right now it looks shorter, but that's just because this has the spacer in there. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it, all the four, all Tacomas have this spacer on here. It's an aluminum spacer that space the uh, the master boost cylinder. I don't know anything about after 2005, 2005 and up, but if you're same generation Tacoma as me, then you have this aluminum piece in between your master cylinder and your firewall. Um, so on the Forerunner. The overall shaft was maybe like three inches longer. Um, I ended up cutting off almost two and a half inches off the shaft, so that way this won't be too long. Um, now, as far as this goes, as you see, I, I put gasket maker here. That's why I kind of don't want to take this off to show it to you guys. Um, it's still kind of drying a little bit, but what ends up happening is, um, on this little aluminum bracket, this aluminum bracket is actually less than an inch thick. It's, it's like seven eighths of an inch thick. Uh, so if you can imagine this, the little aluminum piece used to be seven eighths of an inch thick. So it was that thick before. And I basically shaved it in half. Um, so I took off about a quarter and a half inch well, not a quarter and a half, but you know, like uh, maybe like three eighths of an inch, maybe a little bit less off the uh, the bracket. Um, I had to use a chop saw and grinder, chop it off and grind it down and sand it smooth. Um, it's a lot of work, but you have to do it if you want to upgrade. Um, you can't not have this spacer because again without this spacer this will be sticking too far out and it'll end up not not lining up properly and you can't cut enough off to compensate and as far as I know you can't switch this out so don't even think about that that's that's a lot more work than necessary so the easiest thing to do is shave down this spacer uh, the reason why I put gasket maker between there because you know it was a little bit uneven because um, I messed up the cut. I tried to shave it down some, but it was still a little knickknack gap. So to keep engine gases from getting inside, I went ahead and gasket maker around it, keep it clean. Um, this will give you maybe like just enough to thread the bolt on all the way, which is more than enough. So I guess the, uh, the rear brake fluid line Still lines up perfectly fine. Well, I assume it's the rear brake fluid. Um, <sighs> so 
So when you bend this, you want to be careful because you don't want to kink or break the line. So you just want to bend it slowly and gradually as much as possible. Oh, just kind of gradual bends um, so that way there's no sharp bends or kinks again you know you don't want to kink the line so just try to gradually bend everything throughout the whole line don't try to focus on one spot when you're bending the line just bend at different points to kind of make things match up so that way you don't kink the line but there you go So alright guys, so as you see there, I um, had a little bit of technical difficulty with the camera. It's been a while since I've done this, so you know, unfortunately I forgot some of the basic rules of uh, uh, videoing, but whatever. Stuff happens. Um, I've been driving on this for a while now, and um, overall, it seemed like a decent upgrade. I mean, it's not the upgrade I was expecting, but it turned out to be... Better than what was in there before, is the best way to describe it. it. It's still a little bit mushy. Um, the dual diaphragm brake booster from the 4Runner wasn't as much as an upgrade as I thought it would be just because the 4Runners are heavier trucks um, and uh, the dual diaphragm is supposed to be more efficient. Uh, they had the same they had the same engines, so you know I figured that there wouldn't be any compatibility, compatibility issues, uh, especially with the amount of vacuum that would be needed to be pulled in order to make this uh, brake booster work properly on the truck. But you know, unfortunately, um, it didn't add as much brake boosting as I thought it would. And, but it's okay. Uh, I do notice a difference though. I mean, the, while the mushy brakes are still there a little bit and the brake boost isn't as great as I thought it would be, um, I can definitely feel that this one inch master cylinder is grabbing better and putting a little bit more pressure in the brake system because while I do have to press harder, uh, when I do press hard, I do notice that the wheels are braking better uh, than what was in there before. I believe what's in there before is like a 13 16 master cylinder. Uh, obviously your dual diaphragm is a little bit smaller in diameter, uh, but it makes up for it in the depth and the fact that it's a dual diaphragm. Um, but overall, you know, it's an alright upgrade. It's, is it worth the money to get the brake booster? I don't think so. Uh, I think you're better off just trying to figure out a way to make the one inch uh, cylinder work on the Tacoma's brake booster already. I think this will help in the sense that um, it'll save you a little bit of money. And while the two master cylinders are completely designed differently, um, you know, you should be able to make it work just because they're both both pattern. Um, on the flip side is, you know, if I ever plan on doing a manual swap on my Tacoma, it will make things a little bit better and fit better because the, uh, since the, the blue cylinder is a little bit smaller and, and diag in a, Diagonal, uh, it'll help it, it'll help all the other stuff fit a little bit better. So, anyways, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the hub upgrade. You know, again, all the parts list for the hub upgrade will be listed in the description, and we'll go ahead and get started on that. Alright, guys, this is uh, some leftover parts from my pre runner when uh, it was two wheel drive. Uh, 
If you watch any of my videos, you know that I converted my creep runner into a 4x4 and I kept the hubs just in case I ever decided I wanted to do manual locking hubs and today's the day so first things first we need to take these caps off so as you can see there's a lock nut and it's been pinched there for um, to lock it in so I'm gonna strain that out a little bit so now for the really difficult part um, these things are torqued down to like 200 pounds foot torque so it's no easy task getting this off but um, I have my way I, I, I think I came up with a way of taking this off um, it works for me because of what I have you know there's other ways that people have done it um, there's plenty of videos of people putting this pulling these out and changing out the wheel bearings um, you can see how they did it see which one works best for you but this is the way I did it because I don't have anyone to hold anything for me so here we go so I gotta keep the hub from spinning Alright, so the reason why I'm putting it like this is um, this thing is going to want to walk because all it is is just these four things and then when you're trying to put the torque that you need to knock this nut off, um, it's going to want to walk and wobble. It's not going to want to stay down. So the reason why, so when I put the wrench, what happened is this is going to help the, um, the socket from, uh, from walking and because um, I don't have someone else to hold it down for me so this is the best way for me uh, some people will bolt this into a wheel but when you bolt it into a wheel you still need someone to help you hold down the wheel and and keep the the actual socket from walking too since I don't have any of that I'm gonna do it like this You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it because you, all you need it is, is just to keep it from walking up and down. Just basically put pressure on it to keep it down. There's a little washer in there. The spacer. Um, this is just a spacer. If you have um, ABS, there'll be like a little gear that sits on top of this, and or we're actually not on top of this. Instead of this, there'll be a gear, a little teeth on there for the ABS sensor. But since I don't have ABS, it's just a normal spacer.
Alright, so the hub's finally out. Um, fortunately, the Toyota's, you, you can't take off the dust shield without taking the hub out. Um, I mean, there's ways around it, but... If you uh, plan on doing this and you're kind of picky about your brake dust shield, you know, you can always order a new one so you can put a new one on, but... I'm not gonna waste money on that. It's just a waste of money to be honest with you. But since this is kind of messed up, I'm gonna take it out and kind of hammer it back into place. The next thing I'm gonna do is take off the little seal that's here. This is just a dust shield, uh, so if you damage it a little bit, it kind of doesn't matter. Um, but I bought a new one anyway, so I don't really care. Uh, I'm just gonna chunk it anyways. So now there's like a little C clip here that you want to remove. Get a new one when you buy a new bearing anyways so I don't really care if it messes up all right so now to press out the bearing um, this tool actually will fit right on top of it and push out the bearing so if you don't have something to push it out with the lock nut remover actually works out pretty well I also have this bearing too um, I don't know what it's from, but for some reason I have it. So I'm gonna use this, use them both just to make it longer. Something else I want to do is I want to remove this. Um, it kind of messed up right there when I was trying to hammer it out. I wasn't exactly knocking it out correctly because uh, when I when I first took these out, I, I wasn't really uh, I didn't really know how to remove them properly. But um, but either way, they're unusable, so I'm gonna pop these out. There's actually a special tool that you can use to take these off. Um, I broke mine a long time ago. Never got another one, but you can just use two picks like this to take it off. for the replacement hubs. So, remember I'm gonna have all the part numbers in the description, so if you need uh, the full list of parts that I'm using in this build, just go ahead and it's gonna be in the description. Normally when you buy hubs, they'll come with a new bearing. Assuming you buy the, the hub kit, new secret it comes with a new uh, lock nut but uh, 
I think I'm gonna use the OEM one because the OEM one is brass. This one's aluminum. As you can see, there's a difference between the pre-runner hub and the hub of locking differentials. So first things first, we need to put this in there. I'm gonna go ahead and grease this up. So on this one, both sides are metal, which is good, I guess, just because they both have the good dust seal, I guess. Um, the other one in the kit, one side is metal and the other side is like a plastic. I don't know why, but uh, since this is the one I grabbed, this is the one I'm putting in first. The um, from what I read, the plastic is gonna face the the hub itself, and the metal. Faces the CV joint, so so just in case you don't know or you're wondering, the plastic part out front. What you can do is you can use the old bearing. Put it on top of there and use this. All right, so you want to make sure everything goes in smoothly. So I'm using the old bearing with the uh, the washer thing on the top, and then the lock nut remover. Now that that's in, got the new clamp, C clamp thing. So I went in and got new sales, national oil sales, um, by aftermarket or by OEM. These sales really are just dust shields, so it's not really that important for you to spend the money on the OEM shield. Technically, you could still use your old one, but I just bought a new one just because they're only like 11 bucks each. I need to tap them in so
put the old bushing there as a way to space it up. And then I have this, the perfect diameter for the inner bushing. So when I press it, so when I press this, that way when I press the, um, the hub into the bushing, this will support this bushing right here to keep it from getting pushed through. I don't want to damage this, so... That's a perfect fit. So far, this little lock nut remover has become pretty useful in this install. I mean... I've been using it for a lot more than just removing the lock nut. So if it just so happens to fit perfectly in a lot of applications when it comes to removing and installing these hubs. The only downside is uh, because of these little knobs on here, you won't be able to use it to support the hub on the other side. Um, or maybe you can, but then these might drive into the, the bushing, but I don't know. Ideally, you're going to want to find something to support the back of that bushing because if you don't, when you press in the hub itself, it's going to just push out that bushing and it's going to damage it. Don't forget to put the spacer in there. Like I said, I was gonna, I'm gonna use this one because it's brass. The other one's aluminum. I'd rather than use the brass. So um, this needs to be torqued down to 200 foot pounds of torque. So I'm gonna set it up just like I did to remove it. Um, so that way I can uh, put the torque down. So you have to torque this down to 200 foot pounds of torque. You don't want to put too much pressure on this because you don't want it to mess with the uh, torque rating. But you know, if you do it like me, just put a little bit of pressure just to keep help it keep it from walking too much. And then, you know, you push the torque wrench until it clicks. And that's how you get 200 foot pounds of torque on here. So there's a notch right there. I want to make sure I lock it so it doesn't uh, break loose. So you remember there was a dust cover shield here. So this particular oil seal, you'll have to get this because uh, you'll need this dust cover. This will keep um, this will create a seal with the CV axle, so that way it'll limit the amount of dust and dirt that will get into your uh, CV joint or your bushing. So uh, make sure you do buy this, though. Um, again, part numbers will be in the description. The old bushing 
So this is pretty much the finished product of the hub itself. Um, again, it's a pre-runner, the pre-runner pre uh, spindles or the knuckle with the locking hubs. The locking hubs came from a 95 to 2000 Tacoma. So whenever you order this, uh, make sure they're from the 95 to 2000 Tacoma. Again, part number will be in the description. So the easiest way to remove the CV joint is with two hammers, shoving one in between the CV joint and the differential and using the other hammer to hammer it out slowly. This will be the easiest way without damaging anything. So as you can see on the right side there, I'm removing the old dust shield that came on the two-wheel drive hubs. And the reason why I'm doing this is because these were not modified to fit the 13 WLs. I already, since I already had a modified dust shield, I want to go ahead and swap them over. So on the right side there, you can see uh, I was having trouble installing the hub because the CV joint was keeping it from seating properly. The ring around the CV joint on the end there was bent in slightly, so it was affecting the hub's ability to seat properly with the uh, CV joint. Uh, after knocking this out, it fit properly. Um, I'd recommend that you check this before you install your hub, so that way 
you don't run into the same issue I did. Basically what it is is a spacer, little teeth in there. So we're going to go ahead and get started on the hub install. There's a gasket that you need to buy from Toyota. Uh, again, the part number will be in the description. Um, also, uh, you'll need to purchase some of the seat clips and you will also need to buy the spacer. Uh, that part number will also be in the description. Make sure you line up the alignment pin with the notch in the back of the lockers. Also, I decided to use some bolts instead of using the studs that normally you would find on the locking hubs, uh, mainly because these were cheaper. I decided to go ahead and put some Loctite with all the heat fluctuations that go on in the hubs, uh, this will help keep the nuts and bolts or whatever you put in there from backing out. Um, it just depends on what you guys use. Since I'm using bolts, uh, I'm putting them on the bolts. So here you see me putting in a lock nut that has a washer on there. Uh, you can get this from Toyota. Uh, unfortunately, mine didn't fit perfectly in there, so I had to grind down the edges a little bit to help it fit in a little bit better. Uh, whether or not you'll have to do this, uh, I wouldn't. I couldn't say with 100% certainty, but, but I had to. Uh, again, you know, I put some Loctite on there so it'll keep it from backing out. Uh, this is definitely recommended that you install this because you know you don't want that CV joint backing out on you. And also, don't forget to grease the actual hub itself. And you know, before you start bundling everything down, you know, you want to make sure the lockers actually do what they're supposed to do. Uh, once I confirmed that, you know, I went ahead and put the Loctite on there. Uh, also, when you put the cover on, you know, make sure you line up that pin to one of the notches. Uh, there are quite a few notches on the warns. Um, I can't say for sure with the Ascents as I didn't install these, but just make sure you line up everything properly and uh, go ahead and lock tight those cap down because you don't want that cap falling off on you while you're driving or off-roading. Something else I wanted to do was to rebuild the calipers, replace the seals. Uh, it was a lot harder to remove the pistons than I thought it would be, but uh, I was able to use the air hose. The rubber gaskets that came with the kit fit perfectly fine. Uh, I made the mistake of only ordering one kit. Um, you know, when you order this, if you get the ones that I put in the parts list, you'll need to get two of them um, again you know make sure you get what exactly you need for the brakes that you need in this case I ordered the parts for a 13WL if you knew something else obviously you're gonna have to get the ones for your brakes
All right, well, there you go. Um, that was the brake booster and master cylinder upgrade along with a wheel bearing and manual hub swap. Uh, you know, this is just to show you all the things that you have to go through in order to, to do the uh, hub upgrade. Um, brake booster and stuff, you know, that's all bolt on. You don't need anything really special to work on that. Uh, unfortunately, you know, hubs, different story. You gotta have certain specialty tools to work on that. Not everyone's gonna have access to that. Uh, but you know, as you can see, you know, it's not an easy task. It's definitely a lot of work, especially if you've never done it before or don't have the tools necessary. But you know, if you do, this is what you gotta do. Um, overall, the littlest changes in your truck, you tend to notice, especially if you've driven your truck for a while. Uh, I definitely feel the slight difference. You know, there's a, there's less drag on the front suspension or on the front diff. Uh, the wheels definitely are free spinning whenever they're unlocked. Uh, whenever I do lock them, it drives like how they used to be. You know, you always feel that little bit of drag on the system when you accelerate or when you accelerate or anything or just when you're just driving you know there's a little difference because when you drive a truck for so long you know you, you feel the differences um, but overall you know I think this upgrade was a pretty good upgrade uh, you know there's other things that I wanted to do or try to do that may or may have not worked um, but at the end of the day this is a guaranteed thing that I knew would work and and then, you know, it seems to turn out pretty good. The only, the only thing I would change personally on this is I would just go with some used Aston lockers because when I originally bought these Dyna lock, these uh, worn lockers, um, I thought it would come with all the mounting hardware, but apparently me and the seller had completely different ideas of what mounting hardware is. Um, the um, Overall though, you know, after buying everything, it still, it still came out alright, but I probably could have saved like $100, $200 just by buying stock. The stock ones used from eBay or from a junkyard, a lot of these junkyards sell them for $50 each. Uh, and then after that, just went on eBay or something and found a set of, of cone washers and bolts. Nuts. I mean, you can get nuts anywhere in the washer. You can get them cheap from Home Depot. Uh, the main thing would be to get those cone washers. Uh, and then, if, if you can't find the little studs for cheap, you know, you can just do what I did. Just get, like, regular bolts. As long as those bolts are rated for high torque, it's perfectly fine. You don't have to use the same exact thing. It's okay. Uh, and you see, as, I, as you see, I as I did there, uh, it worked out pretty well, you know, but at the end of the day, save the money. Uh, you know, worn, worn locking hubs are great, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're, they're proven to work, you know, they've been around for a long time, but so have the Aston Toyota lockers. So, you know, if you can save some money, save some money. If you want brand new out of box, I would definitely recommend worn. You can save a lot of money, especially if you didn't have lockers before. Um, and you know, because you know, Warren, you can get them for about the same price as Asin, and then you know, except you don't have to buy cone washers. You know, you the cone washers from the factory add up. You know, they're like four dollars a pop. You got to get twelve of them. So I mean, you're spending almost like fifty bucks plus tax on just washers. And then you buy the studs, then you're you're spending almost a hundred dollars on just hardware alone, and it's a waste of money. You know. Just get the cone washers from eBay. If you can't find them on eBay, then I guess you have to buy them from the dealer. Uh, but for the most part, you can find them on eBay. I found them on eBay for pretty cheap. You know, unfortunately, they're from Australia or you know other countries. But you know, decently priced, a little bit worth weight. But you know, it's better than spending a hundred bucks. Um, Anyway, so that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully uh, everyone likes the new name for my channel. Um, 
I don't have that many people on my channel anyway, so for most people it won't make a difference or noticeable. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching. Take it easy.